said that our first love, or a puppy love, if you choose to call it that, can be the beginning of knowledge, just as a fire is the beginning of light. Do you agree with that? It's breakfast time at the Massey house. <laughs> Are there any more hotcakes, Mom? Yeah, the last one's coming up the griddle right now. Dibs, I said it loudest. Now, right here. <laughs> Cut it in half. Hey, hey, Mom, you got the makings of a great tea quarterback there. Oh, you do play the sweetest compliments. <laughs> hey, Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> Anthony and Cleopatra. Huh? Heloise and Abelard. <laughs> no, that's Judy Massey and Freddie Wormwood. What, what, and what? And there, ladies and gentlemen, you have the four great romances of history. <laughs> What are they talking about? His name is Freddie Winwood, not Wormwood. Oh, I see. Well, uh, who is he? Freddie's just about the nicest boy in town, present company included. Oh, that's not very serious. <laughs> Good morning, Horsey. Go on outside, sweetheart. You've had your breakfast. Out there and play now. Mom? Yes, honey. And his dad knows Mr. B, too. Oh. Mm. Who, as we all know, is the world's greatest judge of character? That's whom, as we all know. Oh. Uh, no, who, as we all know, is correct, dear. Oh, I never get that right. Uh, well, you will. You just got to work on a little bit. Let me have your napkin. Let me have ruined. All right, fine. Dream world. Boy, has she got it bad. <laughs> like soppy. <laughs> you know, Mom, if he didn't carry her book, she'd carry his. I don't suppose you two can remember way back about two and a half years ago when romance first hit you between the eyes, can you? Hmm. Evelyn Beats Mouth. Mm-hmm. Sue Ellen Truett. Mm -hmm. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but weren't you both pretty uh, shook up by the experience? Hmm? Yeah, yeah. Well, we were sure a couple of jerks in those days, right? Well, you didn't think so then any more than Judy does now. Elwood Applemonger. Huh? Who? Or whom? It's who. Who? Elwood Applemonger, that was his name. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. He was about six foot one and a half, and he weighed, oh, I'd say, 100 pounds soaking wet. But when I was Judy's age, I thought he was the most magnificent specimen I had ever seen. <laughs> Whatever happened to him, anyway? Oh, who knows? Mm. <laughs> and to think that at that time he was my whole wide world. Well, I gotta go, Mom. I'll see you. Oh, yeah. All right, honey. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. I'm off, too, Mom. Yeah. I'll see you later. All right, honey. Yes, baby. What? Look, the button's broken, and I was going to wear it to BJ's party tonight. Oh, well, let me see it. Hmm. Well, I'm going in the city, honey, and maybe I can get you a new one, okay? Oh, would you? I'll be forever grateful, really. Mm hmm Until I have to say no to something you want, hmm? Oh, Mother. Hmm? Now you know what a rare privilege it is to have a daughter like me. <laughs> it's <laughs> silly. Goodbye, Mom. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, honey. What a child. Do you know what she does? No, what? She watches from the upstairs window until Freddie Winwood walks by. Then she puts on her track shoes. <laughs> well, I remember when you acted the same way about, uh, what was his name? Uh, John Edward Otis II. That's the one. Those were the days. Mm -hmm. Do you think I should warn Judy, Mother? About what? Oh, well, you know how it is with puppy love. I mean, in the beginning, everything is cookies and ice cream. But sooner or later comes the vinegar. When Judy wants advice, we'll know about it. Just the same. It's a long, long drop from those clouds. Mm. And yet that's the only way we learn to grow up. I wonder what I learned from my crush on John Edward Otis II. Oh, you. The love call of Robert Foster! Goodbye, Mom! Goodbye, dear. You learned a great deal, my girl. Yes. Mrs. Massey is here to see you, Mr. Belzer. Ask her to come in. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hello. Make reservations for two at the usual spot. Oh, yes, Mr. Belzer. my. You're awfully sure of yourself, aren't you? Well, why else would you come all the way to New York if not to have lunch with big old beautiful me? <laughs> I had some shopping to do. Oh. And I will show you it is all finished. And if I can find it, there it is. A little button. Oh, yeah. I, uh, I also have yes. another. You have a call on three. Hold all calls. I have another excuse. What? I want some information. 
Uh, do you know a family in Ellendale called the uh, Winwood? Well, I've done some business with the Jess Winwood. Why? Uh, well, it seems that Judy has an enormous crush on one of the boys. Freddie's his name. Do you know him? Yes. What's he like? Well, now, as a matter of fact, I was an usher at Freddie's first wedding. You what? I'm only kidding. For heaven's no. sake, don't do that. You give me a heart attack. Well, Freddie's a pretty nice boy, as I recall. Oh. About 15. Uh-huh. Very good athlete and a very good student. Uh-huh. Well, that's a relief. I'm glad to hear that. Oh, Paul, speaking of athletes, you won. Oh, I think that's marvelous. Oh, Paul, I'm delighted. If you read the fine print, you'll see I was only runner-up. Only runner-up? Well, I think you ought to be very proud that you're the second best tennis player in your whole club. Well, maybe I ought to be, but I'm not. Oh? Well, men like to win, Chris. They may leap over the net and congratulate the champ, but they're secretly hoping they land on his foot. <laughs> you're peculiar creatures, all of you. Anyway, you're the world's greatest magazine editor. Well, not according to old money bags. Oh? Mm -hmm. B.B. had me on the carpet again this morning. What about? Same old thing. He can't seem to get it through his head that sensationalism may increase the circulation for one issue, but in the long run, it'll drain the blood out of the magazine. Say, so, hey, maybe you could get through to him. I? I've never even met the man. How could I do it? Well, you will, tomorrow night. We're invited to a party at the BB home. We are? Isn't it rather odd that his wife didn't call me? Well, not if you know old Emperor BB. You know, he runs his family like he runs his business. And the arrangements are all made. It's interesting. Doesn't everyone, doesn't anyone ever question his right to do that? Oh, it's happened once or twice. Oh, I see. You're not thinking of turning down the invitation, are you? Well, Paul, I, I don't very much like command performances. Do you? No, but as long as B.B. controls the purse strings, I have to grin and bear it. Yes, well, I, I really don't think I ought to go, Paul. Well, it means an awful lot to me not to offend him. No, and that's why I don't think I ought to go. And you tell me that men are peculiar creatures. Well, uh, what you told me about Basque and Bibi, he and I don't, don't agree on anything, about anything. Well, well, just because you have different points of view doesn't mean you have to challenge him to a duel. No, you simply advance your arguments subtly. <laughs> no, honestly. Have you ever considered me the subtle type? <laughs> well, when you're mad, you're about as subtle as a blunt instrument. But when you're yourself, why, you're clear thinking, you're understanding, and you have a way of making things turn on. Yes, but not always. You see, I have been known to monkey wrench the machinery up so that it's absolutely beyond repair. And I wouldn't want to do that with Mr. Beebe, not with... Please, oh, for me. Oh, that's not fair. What's not fair? You know I can't think straight when you do that. Is that a fact? Yes, that's a fact, Mark. All right, I'll go. I'll go. Sure. Hey, you're busy. Oh, no, honey, I just finished dressing. How do you like it? Like what? My new dress. Oh, fine. Fine. Judy, are you all right? Huh? You hardly touched your dinner at all. Oh, I'm just fine. Just, just wonderful fine. Oh, yes, your eyes are all red and swollen, and you're just fine. Mm -hmm. Everybody in this house minds everybody else's business. What, what do they know about how a person feels about anything or, or how they feel about anybody? Anybody? Like who anybody? Well, anybody. Like, like Freddie Winward, for instance. Oh. <gasps> Freddie, huh? Yes, Freddie. Well, honey, did you have a quarrel? I never want to see him again. Well, if it makes you so miserable, then I certainly would. But, Mother, I want to be miserable. Don't you understand? I want to be, be so miserable that I, that I never forget him. Well, I know, honey. I... Oh, Maria, I want to talk to Mother. Don't I you understand? I love him, Maria. Now, listen, Judy and I are busy, honey. You go on into your room, and I'll be in Mother, room. please don't go out tonight. Please stay with me. Sweetheart, I promise Mr. Belzer I have to go to a oh, party. Oh, sure. You're just like all the rest. You don't get any... 
care about me or anything. She just want to play horsey with Maria. Now, honey, you know that's not true. But not it real. is. You know it is. Judy, listen to me. I don't want you to start crying and get yourself into a big snit, and you will the first know, thing you know. I know, but I it. can't help it. Yes, you can help it. I'm fine. Let me feel you. You're hot as a pistol. All... I don't know. Mama, all right. just all right. so miserable. All right, honey. <laughs> All right, all right. Hmm? <laughs> Sweetheart. I just don't understand why you have to be so mean. Shh, <laughs> honey, it's all right. <laughs> now, listen. Stop it. Huh? Mommy, I'm all right, all right. here. Uh, yes, I'm coming. <laughs> now, listen, I'm going downstairs and I'll be right back, all right? I'll be right back, all right? Don't, don't go, please. I'll be right back. I'm not going anyplace. <laughs> Well, I'm awfully sorry, but I, I'm not going to be able to go out with you tonight. I... What's wrong? Well, it, it's Judy. Did you call a doctor? No, no, no. She's not sick. Oh, well, in a way, she is sick. She's had a fight with Freddie Winwood. For a minute, I thought you were serious. Paul, I am serious. That child's got herself so upset that she's, well, she's even managed to whip up a little fever for herself, and I just... Well, now let me get this straight. Yes? You're going to cancel out on me because your 13-year-old girl has a fight with her boyfriend? Paul, he's not her boyfriend. But she has a crush on him, and, and well, it's her first crush. And that child's upstairs there right now, just crying her heart out. Oh, that's who it is. Yes, and she asked me not to go out tonight. Oh, I know it seems unimportant, but really, from experience, I know that it's very important that I don't go out and leave her alone tonight. You never did want to go to Vivi's party, did you? Oh, oh I, I thought it was a mistake then, and I still do. You're using Judy as an excuse to stay home. Well, not exactly, but her childish little heartbreak just kind of took the balance, that's all. Well, if it were something important, I wouldn't even argue, but a schoolgirl crush. Well, it is important. It's very important to her. She'll have forgotten all about it in two weeks' yes, time. Yes, very likely she will. Well? Well... Look, when I was her age, I went through exactly the same thing. And everybody told me just what you did. Now, in two weeks, in two weeks, you won't even remember the boy. Did you? No, I didn't. As it turned out, they were absolutely right. What are you driving at? Well, I'm only trying to tell you that they were two of the most miserable weeks I've ever spent in my entire life. Just because you're young, it doesn't mean you don't suffer. It's just concentrated more. I wonder if I'll ever get used to being runner-up. Will, will, will you call me when you get home from the party? Why? Paul, don't make it any worse. Well, how can it get worse? It's like stepping into an elevator and finding nothing there. I'm falling headfirst down the shaft, and I'm scared to death. Paul? Thank you. Judy, honey, now stop. Oh, I just feel like I want to die. Well, now come on over here and sit down. I don't feel like I'm worth very much without Freddie. Well, if it's any consolation to you, dear, he probably is just as miserable as you are right now. Well, I hope so. If I had a voodoo doll, I, I, I'd stuff it full of pins. Sweetheart, what's happening to you is perfectly normal, Judy. It's just all a part of adolescence, honey. Sure wish I'd get through it. I just wish I was I was so old that I could never hurt again, ever again. Nobody still breathing is that old. All that happens is you get a little better at hiding the hurt. See? Well. You're not going out? No, sweetie, I'm not. Voodoo doll. Oh, no, I don't think that'd work. Mr. Dolls appeals badly enough as it is. You too, huh? Yes, I do. Jeff.
have a fight? Sort of. Well, well, what happened? Well, men and women don't always see eye to eye on things any more than boys and girls do. They hurt each other unintentionally. Then each thinks that the other is a peculiar creature. If that isn't a perfect description of Freddie Winwood, a peculiar creature, weirdo Winwood. <laughs> Judy, darling, you might as well understand it right now. No two people ever fully understand each other. We're just as different as fingerprints. What seems important to one may seem, well, trivial to the other. Well, then, how do people ever stay in love? I don't know. But I guess it would be pretty dull if we knew exactly what to expect from the other person all the time, wouldn't it? But that doesn't mean we're not supposed to go on trying to understand. But it helps to know that no one has ever made it 100%. Nobody. Well, that's a I still think you ought to go in first. I mean, you're older and bigger than I am. Well, I hardly think Judy will resort to a fist fight. Even so, I mean, it's not getting socked I'm worried about. You first. But why? Because I'm older and bigger than you. I don't worry, Freddie. I'll be right outside listening. Not to be disrespectful, Mr. Belzer. A fat lot of help it's going to be to me with you standing outside listening. Go on. Take your cap off. Is Judy at home? Yeah, she's back. Judy! I'm up in Mother's room. What is it? She might not come down if she knows it's me. Someone here to see you! Oh, I'll be out in a minute. Thanks. And could Judy and I be a, you know? I'm sure I understand. Well, come on in. Thank you. Have a seat. She'll be right here. Judy. Oh, it's you. Judy, if you don't talk to me, I'll, I'll run off and join the Navy. You're not old enough. I'll lie about my age. You're not tall enough either. I'll lie about that, too. I want to tell you the real reason why I didn't sit with you at lunch today. You got no idea what a kidding I've been taking about you. The guys chopped me all day, every day, till I was nearly eight, trying to be a good sport, you know. No, I, I don't know. My jaws ached from forcing a smile. That's no reason to ignore me. I just wanted a day's rest from the razzing, that's all. Just, just one day's rest to keep out of the straitjacket and relax my jaws. But I got teased about you, too. Well, then you know. But I liked it. You what? I like being teased about you. Just, just hearing your name made me feel all, all good inside. All day? Every day? It didn't get your goat? I wonder, will I ever be able to understand you? Well, I don't think you're supposed to. At least that's what my mother said. She said that men and women never do understand each other altogether. Sometimes they, even when they're trying to do the right thing, they hurt each other anyway. See? Sure. Mr. Belzer, there's nothing to be nervous about. I'll, I'll be right in the kitchen listening. You do any listening, and I'll see to it your father never gives you another nickel's worth of allowance. Freddy, come on!
Judy. She's in the kitchen with Freddie. Is Freddie here? I brought him. You did? After I left here, I stopped by the Winwood house. I gather Freddie hasn't been too easy to live with, because when I suggested getting the two kids together, his father almost licked my hand. How come a change of heart? Oh, mostly because I love you. Oh. Partly because of Elsie Dimmitt. Elsie who? Elsie Dimmitt. Who's that? Oh, she was a peculiar creature that made my life a torment when I was 15. She did, huh? I remembered how awful I felt when she and I had a squabble, so I decided to, decided to act as Cupid. Mm -hmm. You know, Paul's gonna happen again. There'll be other times my kids will need me. Well, there'll be times when they need me, too. Well, what about Mr. Moneybag's party, hmm? Nuts to Mr. Moneybag's party. Oh. It's too late to go anyway. Besides, I phoned and made our excuses. Oh. Well, how did it set? <laughs> Just like goulash on a C6 stuff. Oh, that's not terrible. You know, old Beebe doesn't like to have his plans lost up. I see. Well, now tell me, would it help any if I called and was just terribly, terribly, terribly apologetic, huh? Might. Good. Then I'll do it. Uh, and listen, I also might ask them to come here for dinner, perhaps uh, next week sometime. Would you like that? Hey, now you're being Daddy's little helper. Mm. Daddy's little helper has work to do. What's Mr. Beebe's telephone number? Plaza 57099. Good. Oh, Chris. Mm. Who was that fellow you had a crush on in high school? <laughs> you jealous? Oh! I think his name was Elwood Applemonger. You certainly don't have to be jealous of him. That's all right. I hate him anyway. I'm glad. I'll call. Uh, about that to Elsie Dimwit, too. Uh, Dimmit. Dimmit. Oh. Elsie uh, Dimmit. Dimmit. Dimmit, yes. Well, if I ever run into her, I'm warning you. I am prepared to scratch your eyes out, hmm? That a girl. <laughs> I'll call it. Uh, what's the number again? Plaza 57099. Fine. Love has a thousand ways to please, but many more ways to rob us of our ease. Well, good night, and we'll see you next week.